Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to another video in my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a no-code web builder tool, which is called Frontly. Frontly has a built-in AI, which allows you to create your own application rather quickly. In this video, I'm going to do a demo, a quick start. If you recently purchased uh, Frontly or you're looking for a no-code web builder, uh, hopefully I can convince you that Frontly is a great option. My goal in this video is to be able to get you up and running in Frontly so you can get started and get an application going. So let's go, go ahead and do a quick demo on what it's capable of. So if you go to their website, they do have a few demonstration based on their template. So one of which is a content pipeline manager. Basically, this whole thing is created on a Google worksheet. So you have the idea generator on the top, you have the navigation, and then you have a form here where you can submit your idea, create generate idea. You have a select type here, and then you have a content tone, which we can select which type of uh, content tone. And then when you submit an idea, it basically generates a content on the uh, right hand side. You can customize all these within Fundly itself. And then you can assign the content, which then puts you on the second tab on the top, which is where you can assign this content to another person. So if you're managing contents and you're managing the deadlines and you're basically setting the status and assigning it to different people within your content generation process, whether it's for social media or for creating blogs, or if you are a marketing agency where you're moving contents within a pipeline, this is a uh, demonstration of that type of application in Flow. And then you have a list of your contents where you can then manage your content. You can view your content. So this layout right here creates a modal uh, window, which has an image on the top. You can see here, and then you have your different details on the bottom, which is all being pulled from Google Web Worksheet. And then creator management here, you can manage your different creators. You can you can do some filtering here based on the different skill sets that, that they have. What else you can do here? You can add creators on the bottom here. They also have a date picker where you can easily put dates on a field and then you have a link right here. So all these things that you can do within the front end, they also even have a Kanban board where it allows you to move things around, move from different steps in your pipeline. If you're doing a like content management or if you're doing a product management, this will be perfect for that. So basically this is a demonstration of what this tool is capable of. So let's go ahead and quickly talk, talk about Frontly and what is it about. So like I mentioned before, it's a no code web builder. It allows you to create and generate um, an application uh, rather quickly uh, based on your Google Sheet account. So when they first advertised this application, it was built on the premise of Google Sheet. And I know that they're working on other data sources as well, such as Superbase, which is pretty exciting. So this allows um, and extends this uh, platform into different levels, not just Google Sheet. But obviously, if you're working with Google Sheet, this is a really a great platform for that, which allows you to create your worksheets according to, to your needs. You can easily customize it. You can easily delete it and then embed it again as part of the application. Some of the features that it also have is you can also create create an open AI request. So if you look back in the content pipeline manager, the idea generator, the section right here was generated based on AI. So there's different levels of customization that you can do as far as automating your workflows. You can even send an email or navigate to a different page. So there's like a level of customizability that you can do as far as working with your application and building it out from scratch. They have a very nice user interface. You can work with things such as tables, charts, the different blocks. That's what they call it. I'm going to go through the entire platform and show you everything that you need to know to get you started in building up your application. They also have granular access control, which allows you to be able to create permissions and groups and put certain users in a certain groups and you can assign certain groups to only have access to certain parts of your application or certain pages. And lastly, here on the bottom, they also have some branding. So if you have a company logo or a certain colors that you use in your company, you can also customize your application based on your product. By the end of this video, you should be comfortable working with Friendly so you can start building out your application, whether it's internal or for small users that you're serving. So what is it about? It's a no-code web, web builder, like I previously mentioned. They also have a built-in AI, 
which you can use optionally if you want. So if you have a general idea of what you want, but you don't really know how to get started, this is a great tool for that, being able to just create a prompt and just tell it what you want to build and it will just build out everything for you. And then obviously you can customize it and change it however you want. You can also do that on top of it, but it's a great way to just get started if you don't want to start from scratch and you can do it manually and create from scratch. If you're already uh, comfortable with building out your application, it's solely up to you. As far as Friendly versus Web Studio or Webflow comparison, I did a video on Web Studio a couple of weeks back, which is also a great tool for building an application. Just want to go through the difference between these two. Friendly, in my opinion, it's easier to get started because you're using Google Sheet as your main data source. You can easily create your worksheet basically as your table, which is your data source for Friendly. As far as UI, it's not as complex compared to Web Studio. It's very limited at the moment. I believe they're, they're going to be expanding their UI. They're going to make their UI even better in the future. But at the moment, Web Studio has better customizability. You can you can customize your app precisely down to the, the pixels. I know that Friendly also just introduced CSS feature much recently, which I'm not going to be talking about in this video. But just to know that Web Studio can extend outside of just Google Sheets. You can embed a third-party API, you can embed your Firebase data store, Superbase, any external API that you can think of, you can embed it uh, and feed it into Web Studio as part of your application. If you're building out a SaaS, or if it's something that you're going to have thousands or millions of users that you're going to be using your app, um, Web Studio or Webflow is going to scale compared to Friendly. Friendly, based on how they advertise the tool, is meant to be an internal tool. It's either for your personal needs or if you have a, a small team or you know, within your company, I think Friendly will work best for those uh, type of scenarios. But if you're going outside of that, if you're extending it in such a, a setting where you're selling this application for different users, then Web Studio or Webflow will better suit your needs for that. So as far as features is concerned, I've already mentioned that this is primarily driven based off a Google Sheets and you can easily create applications based on that. I'm going to touch on a bunch of these later on, but you have your app branding, you have AI builder, you have access control for permissions and different blocks. As far as use case is concerned, there's essentially an infinite amount of uses that you can use it for, whether you're managing customers, relationships, and if you want to keep track of your product internally, this is a great tool for that. Once you have it in Google Sheet, the possibility is pretty much endless because you can do some automation on top of it. So if you're using ActiPieces or Make or Zapier, you can listen for anytime a, Google, a new row gets added to a Google Sheet. So it, this extends the functionality and feature a bit more because now you have access to some automation in the back end since you're storing everything in Google Sheet. Also, another use case like I've previously demoed is the content management. If you have a flow and you have different people responsible for certain things, if you're doing a product management, you can also use this for this one. Keeping track of your membership. There's really a whole lot of use cases here, whether you're using it for personal needs or for business. Nothing is stopping you from creating an app for it, right? And so I'm going to also quickly go through the application from the, the top level, such as creating the apps, managing the apps, setting the options, such as the data sheets, setting that up, and also customizing apps, such as managing the pages, customizing and changing the user settings. And also the e e forms as part of the application that you can also use. So yeah, let's get to it. Let's go ahead and quickly walk through the application. So when you first log in, this is what you're going to see. You sort of tap navigation here. You're going to see your name on the top. And then on the left side, you're going to be able to see all the different things, such as the home apps that you have. Let's inspect the whole thing from the current app. So you can see that the current app that's active at the moment, you can see the top right here where you can have multiple apps. So when you're first getting started, you're not going to have any list here. I'm inside the books reading application. So if I switch this one to a different app, then you're going to see here we're within the confine of that app right here. So you can see the current apps here and you can see here the different um, connections, the data sources, 
and then the pages and then being able to manage the users within the context of the current application. You also have some experts here. We can hire an expert. You have resources, tutorials, which were, they've been active in producing contents for the community. And they also have the, the help center where you can find some documentation and stuff like that towards the lower left hand here. Let's go ahead and create a new application. So let's go ahead and go to the apps. You can either go from home and create an app within the app section, or you can go here to the apps page right here where you can create and search your apps and manage it. So you can create an application so you can start either from a template so if there's any template here that matches your desired application then you can choose a template here you can read more about it you can view details and do a demo here anywhere from blog post generator you can also have your ai client portal content pipeline manager which i did demo earlier they also have a business ID gener uh, generator. So they currently have a limited list of templates here, but they're very good templates to get you quickly started and get you into building your application rather quickly. So the second option would be creating with AI, which is when I first started, I was using create with AI and it's a great way to just quickly just generate an app based on an idea, or you can create from scratch. Let's go ahead and create with AI. So you can see here that you have the different steps in the process of creating your application. It gives you an idea of what type of prompt you should be using. I'm a product manager and I need to be able to manage, manage tasks and sprints. And I think that's it. Let's go ahead and submit that and see what it does. You can see that based on my prompt, it's attempting to create worksheets within a spreadsheet. So there's a task and sprints, and you can obviously add a little bit more if you want. And you can go to the next step if you're satisfied with those two spreadsheets. And then this, the first uh, worksheet that is going to be generating has the friendly ID, which every worksheet that you create in Friendly is going to have this friendly ID, which is a unique identifier for each row. And this title, description, assignee, status, priority, and due date. And then you, you can add your own column if you want. And then you can inspect the other worksheet as well, which has the same thing, which is the ID and the name, start date and end date, which is great. So it's generating some sample data so you can see and visualize what it looks like when it finishes up and creates this application. So let's go ahead and look at this one. Let's see here that there's a, some sample data that's already been added. And there's the pages. And now it's generating the blocks. Each page constitutes of multiple blocks. We see all the tasks and add tasks and have the task board in the sprints. You can see this all sprints and you can add a sprint and let's go ahead and preview it. All right. So this is only a preview. So we haven't really created the app yet. So this is basically, it named it blogger.ai, which has two pages. So it had the task in the sprints on the top. It looks like it created like a Kanban uh, board where you can move, you know, um, the different tasks within between the different steps. And also you can see the different tasks you can add tasks right here. So they created like multiple columns here. And let's go ahead and look at the sprints. You can see here the sprint one, sprint two. This is start and end date, which is great. And then you can just click on finalize. All right, so you can view the live app and see it in action. And you do a filtering here, a sprint one, the filtering works. Let's add into the sprint, a sprint four. So the only thing that they didn't do is it didn't create a date picker here, which we can customize and add later on. That was the only thing that's missing here. So you can add here and then the task. And then, like I mentioned before, you can move between the different cycles within a sprint from in progress to the do and then move it to done. And then you can see all the different tasks yeah, that's basically whether it's status done. I guess you can filter this out based on the status. And you can also create your tasks. And there's also some additional filters here as well. Do some searching, adding new tasks. So pretty much that's the main thing that it built. So if you go back to your Google Drive, let's go ahead and inspect what it produced. So you can see here that it created the task manager uh, spreadsheet which includes the task and the sprint uh, worksheet as part of it. So the first one includes the task. So you hear the friendly ID in the title description and then the assignee, the status, and then priority, and then the due date. 
And then for the sprints, they created the same thing, front ID, and then the name, start date, and end date. So a very simple application here, which only includes task and sprints in the worksheet. Let's go back to Frontly, going back to this page where it's completed. So now here you can open up the no code editor, right? Instead of viewing the application. So you can see here, it brings you to the actual interface where you can actually work with the different pages within the application, right? So you can choose which page that you want. Let's go ahead and step back here and let's go back to the home page. This creates an application for you here. So it adds into your list of app applications on the top. So you can see here the number of pages that you have and you see that we're currently in this application of the task manager. Good. Let's go and switch to the data sources. When you first create your Fundly account, you're not going to have a Google connection, which you can see here, I did have a Google Sheets connected already. This is important because when you create a Fundly application, Fundly needs a connection to your Google Sheets to be able to create the different worksheets. You can manage the different uh, sources that you have. For instance, if, if I want to include the worksheet for task and sprints, I can do that here as well. And you can also include other Google Sheets as well. Let's go to your Google Sheet account and you create a new uh, worksheet and you want to include it as part of your application. It needs to be created within the account that's connected to your Frontly. If you are creating a worksheet that's not within that account, you're going to have to share it to this uh, Google Sheet account. So this is something to keep in mind. If I go back to the the spreadsheet that I created here, let's say I create a another spreadsheet here. Let's say I, I name this developers. I also want to manage developers. So I'm going to gonna include the name of the developer. And then let's say I want to include this skill set. For instance, let's keep it simple, right? When you're creating and adding a worksheet into the spreadsheet, you don't need to specify the Frontly ID. Frontly is going to automatically add that when you import this new worksheet into that application which I'm going to be showing you guys. So once I added the developers and the name in skill sets here, I can quickly jump back into import data spreadsheet, but I need to copy the spreadsheet first. So it's manual at the moment, but you need to do this step. You just need to copy this URL again, which is already connected, but let's go ahead and copy that and go back to Fundly. So you need to do an import again if you want to include the developers worksheet as part of the data source. So when you do an import here, you're going to quickly see that recognize new developers sheets, but it's not going to go and re-import the task and sprints since it's already existing in the application. So let's go ahead and import that. And also one thing that you also need to know is if you need to modify the existing worksheets, let's say for however reason, I want to include an in addition to the name of the sprint. If you want to do um, an additional column here, such as Epic. So let's say you want to create a sprint where you want to include the sprints within an Epic. Let's say I added this Epic column here as part of the sprint. And then I go back to Frontly. So right now at, at its current state, that new column hasn't been added to Frontly. And if you go back to the pages, it doesn't really know that thing exists within that spreadsheet. So it doesn't really have any recognition of that. So you can see here that it doesn't have an idea of what the new Epic column is. You need to go back to your data source. From here, you can do refresh data and headers. <clears throat> and that will refresh the data sheet based on the changes that you made. So if you go back to the pages and go back to the sprints, you can see here that the Epic column has been recognized has been automatically added as part of this table. So you can see here that's been added into the add sprint block here as well. So let's go back to the applications level and go dive deep more into um, what you can do here. So I already talked about the, the sprints, managing the pages, being able to manage your data source. You can see here the, the different columns that you have, being able to add additional worksheets on top of the current spreadsheets that's attached to this data source, all good. As far as the users is concerned, you can customize this. By default, the users will include the user that's within this account, the owner of this application, that's the main uh, users for this account. Uh, you can create users based on the different applications that you have. So for instance, I'm the only user here. So if I create another user, for instance, John, Wayne, J at Gmail, for example, and then also it gives you this role where you can set this as an owner, admin, or user. 
So you're going to specify this as a user. And you can also create a user groups on this one. So you can also create user groups if you want, which I'll touch on in a little bit. So let's go ahead and create this user. So now I have two user accounts within this application, right? So which is within this task manager application. So if I flip to another application and go to my users, you can see here that I'm the only user here and John Wayne doesn't exist in this application. So something that to keep in mind when you're managing users is users are separate. When you're creating users within this current app, it's not going to be added into the other apps. So they're all different except for the main account user. You can configure some user gr groups as well. So you can go to the users group here and let's say you have a company where you have a marketing group and then you can have that group have a default page. So if you wanted to point to a blog post or if you have a separate marketing page dedicated to marketing stuff, you can have it default to that particular group. And then let's say I want to include the developers, for instance, I have a engineers group, for instance, I can also dedicate a, a default page for that group if I want. And then you can create the permissions where for certain pages, you only allow certain groups to be able to access it. So if that person doesn't belong in marketing, that person won't be able to see this particular um, page. So you can do these customization based on your user groups and settings. So for the user spreadsheet, this is an ex extensibility as part of the user's spreadsheet. So by default, all the users are stored within the confine of Frontly platform. They have their own storage mechanism for storing the users. But if you want to be able to extend the users, such as if you want to add additional fields, such as the profile picture, if you want to add skill sets or whatever you, to extend the user's profile, you can extend it by adding a separate spreadsheet on that and then you can attach it here and then you can specify that. And then there's some other stuff that you, you can have to um, go through in order to, to, to set that up. But you can go through this link, which will go through it. I don't want to make this video too long and spend time on that, but we can do another video based on just customization and extending the users and, and stuff like that. So another thing that you can also do is you can also create this custom user fields, which is also in a application level. So this blog variable that I created here, it's only, it's only available within the application that I'm currently on right now. And you can make it customizable. You can include it as part of the, the signup process. So it's a field that you can use within the application, right? And then profile, you can, whether you're allowing user profile to be able to edit their user profile. So you can do some customization, add some users, you can export your users, you can create users. So that's pretty much the users part of Frontly. Let's go ahead and switch to forms. As part of this application, it's separate from the pages. You can create these forms and let's, let's go ahead and quickly go through this. Let's say I want to do a test form here, which I'm going to name is test form and we're going to create this form and then you can just create a basic form where, where you can use it for whatever scenario that you have use case that you have you can make this a default page you can have this required a login but essentially you can create whatever form that you want you can create multiple fields different type of output you can do the save here you can customize it and you can do based on the submission what you can do when someone submits this you can also customize it if you want to show the logo right on the top uh, and also the text you want to be able to complete so when someone submits this you want to customize the message and override the default that came with it and also the the next button you can also customize this let's say i want to do a save customize this to something and if i hit enter what's going to happen within that so if i want to customize this text right here so all sorts of stuff that you can do to customize this form so basically add it here or delete it duplicate it whatever you want i'm not going to focus on these forms on this video but i just want to show you that this is available within the application as far as the settings you can change the default page when a user first lands on your application which page should be the default to use you can also customize the subdomain. So by default, you're getting this custom subdomain from Frontly. So with this option, you can customize the subdomain based on that and you can add a support email. You can also change the edit date format here. So if you're building an application and you specify a date uh, block 
or a field, you can customize it wherever you, you want to display this date format and create it. So by default, I probably want to choose this type of format, but this really depends on when you, in your certain scenario, which country you live in. And then you can also choose the time format if you want. There's some other stuff right here as well, such as the AM, PM, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to set up. And then you can go ahead and sit, save changes. Branding, you can see here, the AI created a logo for me and attached as part of this application. It, you can change the, the, the primary color if you have a different color, the navigation logo, if you want to change this to something else, fab icon, fab icon, however you want to say that, as you can change that as well, you can attach this. Um, and also you can hide the, the front end badge. Uh, as far as styling, you can do light, dark mode. Um, you can change your brand colors. You see here um, some styling presets if you want to round corner corners for your input. Um, there's also some some themes that you can also specify here. By default, all the pages will have the background color of white. And then you have your block container. We can customize it. So by default, the styling is going to apply consistently across all the different blocks that you have within the application. You can change the input size for your inputs and then radius, how rounded of the corner you want those inputs to be and the border colors for the inputs and then the buttons. So you can do a bunch of customization here and let's go ahead and go to the navigation. If you go back to my application my task manager, you can see the, the sprint and the task right here as part of the, the, the navigation, All right? So you can customize it. You can, you can, um, actually I'm on a different app. So let's go ahead and go to the task manager. You can see real time what's happening. So let's go back into the settings. And let's go back to navigation, All right? So the sprints and the task, like I previously mentioned, you can drag this around, you can customize this. And if you want to order your pages and how it's shown in the navigation, you can do that and save the sorting. You can do some grouping as well. And also some custom links. If you have an external website you want to attach to this, let's say I want to attach a, a new custom link here. Let's say I want to go to, I don't know, google.com. Something like that, right? So you can, you can create here and then you're going to create an icon and then um, save custom links. So if you go back to your application, it's going to show up in your application. So I didn't really choose an icon. So it's, it's just showing the plain icon, but you can customize it. You can change the colors. And let's quickly toggle into the authentication. So by default, when you create this application, there's authentication in place, but you're not able to create a, uh, a new user. So if you want to enable sign up from your page, you can go ahead and do that, add sign up. You can also change the forgot password email. So if you want to customize your email when someone forgets your password and some of the things such as the login headers, sign up headers, you can also customize those things, what it's going to say on the label. So there's a little bit of level of customizability that you can also use. You can also require them to read the terms and conditions if you want. So you can do all that. The custom variable is something that you can use within the application. So you can pass in the variables within the application. So you can create a new custom variables based on your needs. And you can also customize the key. You can name, name this whatever you want. And then you can use this within the application. And I'm going to skip to the advanced because I don't want to show my API key, but just to know that there's settings in here where you can create a webhook or you can use the webhook to create some users. So that's within advance. As far as domain, you can attach this application as part of your custom domain. So you don't have to use the friendly domain here. So you can do that as well. If you want to customize this, let's go to integration. Like I previously mentioned before, you're working on adding a super base integration. That's where you can set it. You can set your make account. If you are doing some automation with make, you can do a customization here as well. And there's some other settings here as well. I'm not going to go into. So that's pretty much the top level of the settings. I went to the data sources. I went to the users. And let's go ahead and just talk through the pages. So if you can manage the different pages, you can add an additional page for here. Let's call this developers. And I also want to manage developers. So let's go ahead and create a page here. So if you can see, let's go back out. You can see here now within this application, I have the sprints, task, and developers pages within this app, right? So if you go back to your application, you should see that, let's go ahead and refresh this. 
you should be able to see the new page here it's on that navigation so it automatically picked up the new page that you added into your application so let's go back into the application here and let's go back into the developers so when you're first starting from the beginning and setting up your pages you can see here that it is focused on the left hand side here you can see the page settings here and then navigate so on the top level you see that you have the developers which is the name of the page and then we can add your blocks you can see the hierarchy of what is included as part of this page in the middle that's where you can customize your page and add different blocks and customize it according to your needs and then on the right hand side that's where you can customize each block so when you add the blocks into this page you can customize it so right now since i'm on a page level you can see here that i can only customize the page i can set the width let's say i want to make the width you're not really going to see the change but you can customize the width based on if you do want to do 100 percent uh, if you do 1200 pixel you can see here the gray sort of shifted a little bit based on the, the width that i've specified here the navigation icon i can specify here as well so this is going to be on the page level if I'm on this page, I want to hide the navigation. I can toggle this one as well. I can set them the padding and the block spacing. And then I can also show the grid lines if I want. So you can easily see where everything is. I can pretty much create a new block, whether I can browse new block or I can go from the top or there's some common uh, blocks that you can add here. But if you want to see the whole list, you have to click on the more, which is on that three dots right here on the top. Um, you can see all the, the different blocks that you can use within the, the page itself. There's also a category of blocks, um, but uh, if you want to display everything, you can just switch to all and that will give you everything. So there's a level of customizability that you can also use. So for instance, if I want to display a data of grid of cards, I can use this block. When you're first setting up your page, it's a good habit to include as part of your page creation is to include either a row or a column. So let's go ahead and add a row block here. You see here that it creates a row, which I can include additional blocks inside of it. So if you can see here that I'm within the row block, so I can easily go back to the page and see that the row has been added to the page here. I can click on it and then I can do customize this block, which is the row. I can do and show the background and that's going to show the, the white background here. And let's go ahead and add more stuff on top of it. So let's say I want to add a column. I want to do a two, a two column uh, type of layout. So I want to click on column again, which gives me this layout, which have a, a row and then two columns inside of it. So you can see here the hierarchy. So if I go back to the page level, you can see here I have the, the row as the first block as a parent. And then I have a two columns, which is the, the, the child blocks that's sitting inside of that row. And then I can pretty much add some stuff such as details or tables. Let's say I want to do a, a table list of my developers. I want to include more so I can include it as part of the column. So if I go back to the page, so you can see that the row has a column and then has a table inside of it. And you can do the same thing on this side, on this column where you can add, let's say I want to do a chart here. All right. So now if you go back and go to your page, you can see that the blocks have this hierarchy where I have two columns that's sitting below the row and then I have table and a chart that's sitting respectively within each column, right? And then I can pretty much click on the, the table itself where it brings up the screen and I can specify what spreadsheet this table should be pointing to, right? So I want the developers to be in this and then you can customize it. You can provide some options here, what type of uh, columns you want to show as part of this table. I can hide the skill set or I can show it the skill set. You can also define certain actions by default. Whenever you click on a row within a table, it's going to go and go to that view where you can see the details. Also this custom option where you can allow for creation of records. So this is really an optional thing. If you want the users to be able to create these users or create the records, or you want to create these records yourself. So it's really up to you and how you want to set this up. And the, the, the record click action, you can also um, create a custom view if you want, or you, you want to do a custom action if you want to further customize this according to your needs. Or if you click on a row and if you don't want any action to take place, then you just put no on it. So by default, I don't have anything. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how this looks like. Let's go ahead and preview this, which is going to automatically just save the page for you. So now I'm on this developer's page where I can create new records. Let's say I, 
I'm adding a new record for Dennis and I'm doing let's say my, my skill set in, in SQL. So now it automatically refreshes the page and then I, I don't have my chart set up. You can see here that it placed the name in the skills. So that's pretty much what it looks like right now. And then I can set up my developers as well. Um, I want to see a horizontal and I want to do a, let's say I want to do a line, line graph. I don't know what um, type of uh, things the chart is going to be for, but that's the option that I pick and it can give me this option. And then based on the blocks that I've selected, which is chart, I can further customize this. I can specify the label, which part of the X and Y, which one I want to specify it for the label and I can do a grouping and I can also further customize the click action when you click on it. And then on the right hand side, you can set up the spacing, the background, what which colors you want to include the background or not. And you can further customize the size. There's a whole host of optimization that you can do here. There's also, like I mentioned before, there's a custom CSS that you can also do, which is not available apparently in my plan. And then you can customize the developers here. Let's say I want to, if you want to say devs, let's go ahead and preview this one, which will open up a new tab. You can see here, I added a new, you can see the graph here, which includes developers and devs. If I want to make this a little bit wider, I can change this on a page settings. Let's see, maybe 100%. That's going to occupy the whole width of that page. So if I go refresh to this one, that should stretch out the whole row within that, right? With the whole page. So yeah, we can pretty much add another row here. Let me go back into the page itself and let's go ahead and add a row block here. And that would put another row on the bottom. So you can basically customize this according to how you want this app to look like. And then you can change the columns. So you can go back into the columns and customize it. And let's say I want to fill the reigning space or if you want a minimum width for this section right here on the left hand column, if you want to, let's say, I want to specify a certain width so that a minimum it should occupy um, at least a minimum of you know this this many width um, i can even specify the height if i want if you want specify the columns height here i can also do that so that makes the percentage between the, the, this column and this column um, the, the same i want to go back to the pages where I can customize the sprints. So let's say I want to change this to right now, by default, the AI created a field type of input. I want to change this to a date, but I also want to change um, this one right here, the end date to also be in, in uh, a date field type. I can go ahead and do that. And if I go back to the preview and you see here that it gave me a date picker now, so I can easily sec select my date, although I didn't change the date format, but you get the point. I can assign this to a, an epic and then I can create my sprints here. I'm going to sprint four or sprint four. And this epic is required. One thing I forgot to mention is you can also customize how you want to validate this. So for instance, if you go to this epic, if let's say I want to change the validation here, I can go to edit field validation which by, by default, if you add a field, it, it makes this a required field. So let's say I, want, I don't want this to be a required field. I can toggle this one. And if for some reason I'm expecting an email, you can also toggle this. So there's some cool validation here that you can also do some main characters, uh, max characters. If you want to do some custom regular expression, if you have some complex input where you want to customize what type of data a user can enter into that field, you can enter a regex here. There's all kinds of customization that you can also do. You can also change the placeholder if you want. For instance, like Epic, the placeholder is the text that shows up within an input. So you can change that. So this is, this, this is an Epic. Just give you an example. And then you can also provide the default value here for any input. So this applies to any fields or any blocks that you want, right? So. And there's some other stuff here as well as such as if you want to display conditions, for instance, if you want to set and show this only for a certain users based on the state, based on a euro parameter, for instance, the custom variable that I've defined on an application level, you can also use this to do a, a conditional check whether to display this input or not. So you can add 
all these different blocks within your application. You can have a button here that you can add, as you see here. You can also have charts, icons. You got the maps, the info list, which basically a detailed list of things for that particular row. If you want to get a detailed view of that list, column and rows we went through already. You can also display a YouTube video in your application. You can embed an image. You can also do an iframe. So if you have an HTML or a page that you want to embed as part of this application, you can also do that. So at the moment, here's the complete list of the blocks that you can use um, in Frontly. There's also this code calculator, which I just saw. So you can do a simple calculation. So this is pretty much what Fundly is. If you have any questions, just put it on the comment. If you want me to do additional videos, if you want me to build uh, certain apps for Fundly, please go ahead and leave me a comment in this video and we can do a whole series on building applications using Fundly. This is something that I might do in the future. So just leave a comment if you like this video and if you found it informative, please go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button and go ahead and share. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Later.